first exhibition of our second semester, our Laura Roosevelt exhibition. I have to tell you, uh, and for those of you who know me, I have a bunch of pictures of Teddy Roosevelt, who's very near and dear to my heart in my office. Most of his books uh, and a lot of other things that remind me, I really have a lot of admiration for the man and what he was able to do. So when we got together and Elizabeth and I were talking about this, I was really excited. I think you know, this is just absolutely incredible to be able to do this tonight. So really on behalf of the museum, I want to welcome you here tonight. Welcome you to Jesuit. And uh, I think we're in for a real treat. I know we're in for a real treat. So now it's uh, my pleasure to introduce our museum director, Elizabeth Hunt Block. And she's going to talk a little bit about Laura. Good evening, everyone. Um, as always, I just want to thank you for being here. Also, we have had great support. We have many board members and docents here, so if anyone wants to wave, anyway, we're just thrilled. Um, this exhibition, I was very excited because I learned about Laura actually through the wonderful Dallas Historical Society. But then I got to meet Laura and we started talking and we were so excited that she actually wanted to bring the exhibition to Jesuit. Um, I could go on and on, there's a lot of information about her. She uh, did went to Denison and then later has an MFA, for a master's from New York University. Um, what would you say you're most inspired with the abstract art? And we're, we'll, I'll get. I'll hand it over to her. We'll do that. We'll do that. Another okay. Bit, okay. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so the main thing is, is that we're is that I want her to talk about the, all of the different art, but that this whole concept is really talk about entrepreneurial, and it's a pioneer concept because she's taken the historical photographs and set them to her amazing abstract pieces. So I could, again, we're just thrilled that you are here. Thank you, and I'm gonna let you, let you take, it, take it on. <laughs> Thank you, Elizabeth. Excuse me. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> wow, a lot of people here. <laughs> Um, thank you, thank you. Um, this body of work is, just to, I'll go into a little technical about it, it is based on, it's photographs of my abstract paintings that I've combined with historical photographs. So it's a two-step process that I use um, in Photoshop. Um, I take copious uh, documentation of my abstract paintings and I've been an abstract, I started painting at Ursuline um, in seventh grade, Sister Madeline Kelly was my teacher of art history and art, and I got the bug, and I'm still almost 60, still doing it. Um, so each one of these paintings, each one of these canvases, are based on actual large or sometimes very small photographs of paintings of mine. And what I do is I spend time on the computer stretching them, making them smaller, and then I match them with historical photographs. And how that came to be, I was up at the FDR library when I was in, still living in Greenwich, Connecticut, and I was talking uh, with Paul Sparrow, who is the director there, and he was doing um, an exhibit called Art of the Roosevelt's. And I said, well, Paul, you know I'm an artist too. And he said, well, let me show, show me your work. And well, they were only abstract paintings. And I thought, but I can do something else with him. So I went, I started looking at the collection of the, the photographs that are at the FDR library. And I said, I'll get back with you in a couple months. And I, I showed him some preliminary samples of ideas that I, of things that I wanted to go with. He ended up commissioning me to make three paintings. Uh, one was of, he chose the photographs. One was of Eleanor Roosevelt, which is not, Elizabeth didn't choose it, she chose another one of Eleanor. Um, and I'll talk about that one in a minute, which is outside. Um, and then this one was the, the photograph that he chose of FDR. And I think that he chose that because um, that is, I believe, the only photograph where FDR is standing where he's not, doesn't have somebody else around supporting him. Um, it's not, he doesn't have one of his sons, he doesn't have an aide, and he's on the Argentinian, he's on the USS, Argen, um, the USS um, Indianapolis overlooking the Argentinian fleet. Elizabeth, in curating this, um, we decided that we, this would really be a wall that would be dedicated to FDR. This is um, a photograph um, of 
FDR and Churchill with the Atlantic uh, Treaty. Well, I call it the Atlantic Treaty. Um, each quote um, comes from and really spend time with these and come back because the words are as important to me as the paintings are. Um, it was a, about a year and a half ago, um, the Dallas Historical Society asked me to do, uh, do an exhibit around this body of work and I thought, wow, wouldn't it be really, really neat to uh, couple them with what the words of Eleanor and and um, Franklin. My late aunt Chandler uh, Roosevelt Lindsley had read every book that Eleanor, everything that Eleanor at FDR um, had ever wrote, and she created two books called Quotable Eleanor and Quotable FDR. And so I went to Chandler, and I also went to my sister Liz, who is a historian on Eleanor Roosevelt's column My Day. And Eleanor Roosevelt started that in. Um, when FDR first got in office and she did it every single day except Sunday for until she died um, and it basically chronicled her day so these quotes are taken um, from Eleanor Roosevelt's My Day column, some other ones that my sister knew of and that my aunt knew of. Um, midway through this project my aunt passed away um, very suddenly um, but it it still lives on here with her and Elizabeth chose this painting that wall we call it our Texas wall and that last painting down there is of um, FDR and Eleanor with my father and my aunt Chandler is right above and that's my uncle David and then my grandmother and that was out at Ben Brook uh, Texas uh, which is west of Fort Worth um, as I, as I said, every time this um, exhibit has been, um, this body of work has been exhibited, I create more. Um, those two pieces of FDR in front of, um, that's at the Cotton Bowl in 1936. He did the dedication, the centennial of the centennial building down there. And I titled that, um, my sister actually titled that painting, I Salute the Empire of Texas. And it's the ending, um, the ending sentence to his speech that he gave at the Cotton Bowl. The other painting, the other photograph on that wall is called Chapel in the Woods. And that is a photograph of the chapel in the woods up at North Texas State University. Um, and the, po the prayer, Eleanor said that prayer um, at, at the dedication. And she had heard it um, at St. John's across um, from, the, from the White House. And it was in her wallet until she, until she passed away. So that is a very, I'm, I'm telling you these little antidotes because they're very, they're as important as the paintings. Or they're, they give, the, I call this work historic American pop. And pop art is fun. Pop art, you think of Andy Warhol, you think of Lichtenstein, you think of the Maryland's, the Campbell Soup cans, you, you know, the POWs. Um, what I wanted to do was take history, um, part in times in history, and put them in a different framework. Um, I've manipulated the photographs uh, in many, many cases. Um, for example, this one here, I call this painting Sears. Um, that is in the Oval Office. They're discussing the Civil Rights Act. And um, the Oval Office was not laid out like that. The, the, the door behind, uh, that's in the middle there, was actually behind LBJ. The light was in the center. And so I manipulated it with Photoshop. And it was, in, I wanted that kind of Botticelli style uh, shell there to, to be symbolic of, you know, rebirth of change in the, that was going on in America. Um, the, you know, the end of Jim Crow, you know, all, all the things that were happening in the 60s. So I call this Sears, and the uh, quote um, that goes along with this is, peace can endure only so long as humanity really insists upon it and is willing to work for it and sacrifice for it. What greater sacrifice did Martin Luther King do other than lose his life? Um, the, the far painting on the... Lincoln obviously just stands alone. Um, the far painting, the painting with um, Eleanor and JFK has a fun story behind it. And I heard this story from a docent up at Valkill. And 
JFK had gone up to have tea with Eleanor, solic soliciting her for uh, his, her, his, her endorsement when he was going to be running for president. And the docent said to me, they sat way back in, the, in, in her living room at the table, and they had tea, and she proceeded to call him boy throughout the entire <laughs> tea time. She gave him a book called um, FDR, or a pamphlet called FDR Speaks. And it was, a, it was a copy of all, lots of his speeches, things that she felt that he needed to understand and, and know about um, before she would give him his endorsement. So you can see in that photograph, it has, um, it, he's got that pamphlet underneath his arm. They are on the Senate steps there, and she has given him an endorsement in that one. Just about a little bit about the artistic, because this is art and history, a little bit about the artistic process. With This is a painting that actually is um, in somebody's home up in um, New Hampshire. But it's based on a Jasper Johns painting called Yusuyuki, which if you know your art history, um, it's all about cross hatchings. So when I'm matching the, uh, the painting with the photograph, and I was looking at the photograph of their hands, of uh, JFK and Eleanor's hands, I was like, ah, oh, I know the exact right painting for that. So that, that was there, and so that's just kind of what I go through in the studio and on the computer in my process. Speaking about Teddy Roosevelt, your, your guy, if we look back ho over here at the mantle, that uh, photograph, is uh, Teddy is on the campaign trail. It's 1912. He walks out of the hotel and he greets his audience and he getting ready to give his speech. He takes his hand and he holds his chest. He looks at it, takes his tie, stuffs it into his shirt and says, ladies and gentlemen, excuse me for a moment, but I've just been shot. And he goes on to say, but it takes more than this to kill a bull moose. <laughs> so I call that painting indomitable. Um, it, is, um, it just speaks with the world about that, that man. Um, the other one on the out, outside, I, I call it Hats Off. It's, a, it's, FDR, it's Teddy in uh, 1904. Um, there's a study down there of the one in it. It, it's, it's called I Look Fear in the Face, and um, it's when, it's, it's basically a study. What I'll do is go and divide that into two pieces, one based on the Alamo and, um, and then one based on the Rough Riders. So this, that's just a smaller piece. The pieces in the case are all studies for the second exhibit that I participated in at the FDR library. And those are all based on, um, the, it was an exhibit called Pearl Harbor. And so all these, these are actual flags that I've, they're historical flags that I've done for clients um, that are all tattered and, and worn. And so I put them on linen and paint in on them again. And, and so I then added these, um, in one you have, um, FTR is laying the keel of the USS Arizona. He is under, secre under Assistant Secretary of the Navy, and he can walk. It's one of the few photographs that you see him in a, prof in a, in a professional way walking uh, on his own. So that's, a, that's an important photograph. The, um, the next one that's here on this wall is, has that famous um, speech in the center where he cross, crosses it out and says this is a day that we'll live on in, not in history, but, but in infamy. Um, the last American flag that's standing, um, FDR is addressing Congress, um, signing the Declaration of War and the tugs um, with being, trying to keep the USS Arizona from sinking. And finally, um, the third piece in that series is of the USS Arizona going down. So that's that. The other two ones outside, um, there's, a, uh, there's one of Eleanor that's, um, she's bent over over her desk. And that is actually a family photograph um, that I found um, 
it was at my aunt's house. Um, and it was one that my aunt really wanted in, in, in this collection um, to be, be exhibited. And it was because Eleanor held, felt an extreme duty and honor. And in writing her column, my, my parents tell a story that when they were on their um, honeymoon, they stayed with her in New York. And the, there were two caveats. One was, well, one caveat, really, that they make breakfast every morning at 7 o'clock. And so they would go out to the theater, but they would come home, and they would walk by her, her, where her office was, or her den. And there she would be, late at night, still bent over, writing, um, communicating with, with, with us, with the American people, writing her column, answering her letters. Um, and then, um, so, th and that one is called Devoirs up there, and, and the quote that goes along with it is, was chosen by, by my aunt. So, um, enjoy. This is, um, I think there are 19 pieces here. The entire collection is, is in a pamphlet. Um, there's 40 pieces in the collection. Um, I do, every time it's been exhibited, I do one or two more. Um, I might have a special one for you for uh, <laughs> Aunt Teddy um, coming up, um, especially maybe with all those rough riders. We can talk about that over tea. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and um, so, no, the collection keeps on growing. Um, the next stop, where it goes from here, we don't have a plan. If anybody has any ideas, um, it's, it's free to, to go wherever it, wherever it can go. It's, for me, having it here at Jesuit, um, being able to, to talk to the boys, maybe an art class, maybe a history class, maybe a combination thereof, is really what this is all about. Um, it's, it's for young people. Um, it's, it, it makes me happy. Um, my, my abstract work is, is sometimes very challenging. This um, just, just makes me smile, and I hope it does to you all too. Thank you. Laura, thank you so much. Um, we just, uh, everything, what I love is that we have history that's become alive, really, yeah, because of you. Yeah. And so we're thrilled that you're here. Everyone, thank you for being here. Please come and talk with Laura. She, we're thrilled. She has already lined up for different classes. I love that so we're idea. very excited about that. And, um, and then please just enjoy, and uh, thank you for being here.